ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies, we're going to start this off with a little bit of uh, eyes wide shut. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what the biggest problem in life for me is? Being able to see what's going on. And literally looking at this world and watching everybody else not see. I keep saying everybody should see what I see. So I'm going to explain it again because this is why I am at a loss for words. December 4th, 19, I was telling people it was 89. It was 1988. December 4th, I had not turned 20 years old yet. No, was I 20? I was 20. I had not turned 21. One of them two. No, 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 no. I had not turned 20 yet. I was about to turn 20. I'm sorry. Whew, just got that. Born in December. So it's the dates and everything. About to turn 20. And I said, let me go to this doctor and get some things done. Went to the doctor and said, hey, Dr. Joseph Peters. Look that mother, uh, I mean, sorry. Anyway, and I said, look, you've been our doctor for a while. I've known you since I was a wee bit high to a knee hop, a grasshopper and all them other little rapper snapper, you know, that type of stuff. And he's like, yeah, I've been, I've been there. I'd be like, well, I need to get some surgery done. I got this problem. I, they, they say I got a wandering eye. I don't know, I got this disease called myasthenia gravis that causes that problem. So I just think it's just a regular wandering eye because that's what people say it. Oh yeah, we can correct that. That's just two lines on the eye. We just go ahead and just snip snap and there you go. You'd be able, no problem, be one day surgery, just a couple of hours. I said, really? Yep, that's all he, hey, wait, hold on. What what What's this, this, this surgery entail? What you talking about? Well, I, I don't never, I, I, ain't got, I ain't had no surgeries. What What's the surgery? What What's all the stuff that's involved? Oh, well, we put you, give you a general anesthesia. What's general anesthesia? Oh, well, that's what we put you under. Put me under? Oh, I'll be asleep? Yeah, you'll be asleep. I, oh, hold on now. Got a problem with that. You see, I am very, very, very untrusting of people. I don't trust nobody. It takes me a while. I got other people in the house. I usually stay up all night because I don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? So, and I definitely, I don't trust you, mother... You know, so you, uh, is there somehow you could test to see, you know, uh, whatever you got to keep me under the least amount of times? Oh, yeah, we we got a test we can run. Really? Yep, got a test we can run. Well, I'll schedule you for that. Okay, thank you, Doc. Go back for a follow-up visit. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Oh, yeah, everything's fine. Hey, what about that test you said? Oh, you hadn't scheduled it yet. Oh, you're going to tell your secretary today to do that? Okay, and I just I just wait for them to call me. Okay, uh, oh yeah 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 I'm ready. Okay yeah thanks for the prep. I'll, I'll see you, see you next time for the next scheduled prepping. Hey hey doc how you doing? Oh yeah we don't have two preps already. Oh hey be, before you go on with the conversation hey what, what, that was a test you were supposed to do. Oh you still ain't did it yet huh? Oh and your secretary oh but you gonna make sure you do it this time? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, in two weeks, the, the appointment for the, the surgery and everything. Okay, uh, plenty enough time to do the test? Okay, no problem. All right. Hey, nurse. Hey, you guys had me get here at 3 o'clock in the morning and have my sister drop me off. Uh, the surgery ain't until 9, 6 hours. Why y'all have me get here so early? Oh, oh, the prep me. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, what about that test the doc? Oh, oh, he's going to be here soon, and he'll, he'll go ahead and let me know what's going on? Okay, thanks, nurse. Hey, how you doing, nurse? You different. Oh, you just came on ship? Oh, you guys are getting ready to take me and roll me into the operating room? Oh, no problem. Hey, uh, nurse, before y'all take me into this room, uh, what about that test the doctor was supposed to run, you know, to check the blood to see what type? Oh, I'd have to wait for him to get here to talk to him about that. Okay. Hey, doc. <laughs> hey, I'm so glad you just finally showed up. I've been here going on six hours. Yeah. Uh, what about that test you were supposed to run? Oh, you guys use this on everybody and you ain't had no problems so far? And you don't you don't you don't see foresee any problems today? Oh, okay, thanks, Doc. You the doctor. Less than twenty minutes later. Malignant hyperthermia.
Now, some of y'all have been around for a while, but there are a lot of people who ain't been around to hear this story. <sighs> so, let's do the malignant hypothermia. Y'all don't mind? I don't mind. Let's do, we're going to leave that alone. I'm going to turn on the microphone. Uh, we got some customizations going on. So y'all just give give it a second for the microphone to come on. And let's do... Hyperthermia. There it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia, or MH, is a disease that causes... What you doing, dragon? I didn't, I didn't already did it. I don't need you now. That causes a fast rise in body temperature. Yes, yeah, severe muscle contractions. And when someone receives general anesthesia, like I did, uh, when one or more of the following drugs, helothine, helothine, I don't know that, isoflurine and sovlofluorine. This is the one. No, this is no, not sovlofluorine or disoflurine. No, it's the silicolurine. Lane that that one right there, the suckling that the you know the we gonna kick it. That's today, you know what I'm saying. That's the one right there that I'm allergic to for sure. Muscular dystrophy and malignant hyperthermia are best friends. Malignant hyperthermia is a genetic disorder passed down through families. At least three of my family members have tested positive for this disorder, that they're allergic to the same junk. And at least two of them have tested positive for muscular dystrophy. Although we don't have a severe case and they are not as bad as I've been, but pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, malignant hyperthermia. <laughs> if only y'all knew. One hundred and twenty six degrees Fahrenheit. Stop listening. I I just need to make sure that works right there. Okay. Wake up. 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my body temperature. And the reason why they only stopped at 126 degrees is because that's as high as their instruments ran. As a result of me and at least one other young lady, their instruments go a whole lot higher now. Okay, now let's, let's do this. How serious is malignant hypothermia, MH? The classic signs of malignant hypothermia includes, <laughs> okay, hyperthermia is called malignant hypothermia. Of course that would be a classic sign. To mark degree, blah, 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 blah. Increase carbon dioxide production, increase oxygen consumption, blah, 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 blah. I, I, we asked how serious. Oh, the syndrome is likely to be fatal if untreated. So let's have that conversation right now. While the doctor's operating and he's in my eye with his scalpel, ladies and gentlemen, I wake up. And I'm looking around. I can't move. I can't talk. Because <laughs> um, they have drugged me with anesthesia. <sighs> so the doctor goes, something is wrong. The anesthesiologist who's above my head goes, what do you mean something is wrong? The doctor goes, he is awake. The anesthesiologist goes, what do you mean he's awake? The doctor says, his eyes are moving, he's awake. The anesthesiologist stands up, leans over, you know, because he's on the second level of the operating room, and he goes, oh, reaches up with his right hand, turns the knob to the, pay attention, right. He doesn't turn it a little bit, he turns it a lot of bit. I do not joke with you. That's I remember that like it happened yesterday. 
Anything before that, I have to focus to think about. I have no memory prior to the operation, and I don't retain memories after the operation because of these idiots. With a body temperature of 126 degrees, they fried, this is your brain on drugs. My, my brain. They gave me an overdose of anesthesia, which caused me to be in a coma roughly for about six months. When I came out of the coma, I ended up in what was called CCU, critical care unit. Yeah, that's just above the ICU, intensive care unit. I remained in CCU because I had a, now in CCU, I had my own private suite, literally. Oh yeah, they were taking care of everything. The hospital bill was $2.2 million. 2.2 million. They wanted me to pay $200,000 the deductible. I had a 10% deductible. I worked for Domino's Pizza. I was a manager getting ready to get my own store. They called me the revenue enhancement specialist. Their stores were making a million dollars a year and I was getting ready to get my own store. They were going to give me a store because I had brought these individuals at Domino's so much money. Two brothers. Forgot, forgot those two. Anyway, Overdose of anesthesia, massive heart attack, massive stroke. Said they had to throw me in a tub of ice. Things were so, quote unquote, critical that I died, according to the doctors, clinically, clinical death. They called my family. Hey, how y'all doing? You, you, you remember that mother y'all brought up into a hospital? <laughs> y'all got to come over here and get him. Yeah, yeah, he 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 dead. Y'all gotta come claim this body. We don't want it around here. Come on now, come and get it. Oh, Y'all just two miles away. Well, come on now. We ain't got all day. Come and get this out of our hospital. Yeah, they called my family and told them I had died on the operating table, and that they needed to come and claim the body. So my family gets there. Now my family didn't know that in the time it took for them to get from the house to the hospital, they had flown a helicopter from UCLA, which is in Westwood, California, which is about 25 miles away from the house. They had flew by helicopter this drug. There is a drug that they give for malignant hyperthermia. Um, stop listening. There it is right there. Dantrium. Dantrium, that's the drug that they flew in from, they said it was still experimental, even though it had been around since the 60s. They hadn't had too many people with a severe reaction as I had, but they flew this drug in, three vials of it. You're only supposed to give 10 milligrams. I, I think it's not more than 10 milligrams um, at a time. In other words, in one setting, they gave me an overdose. They gave me 30 milligrams. And the 10 milligrams, that's the maximum. It's supposed to be one milligram at a time. They gave me 30 milligrams at one time. Hey, I was clinically dead. What, what damage could they cause? You have no idea. Okay. No other anesthetic drug appears to be trigger, uh, triggers, including these junk right here muscle relaxant this one right here is also a trigger for malignant hypothermia this was 2015 ladies and gentlemen this is the one a muscle relaxant i have muscular dystrophy my muscles don't relax not like that and so when they gave me the overdose they had to fly this junk this is the what you call it the generic name this is the official name. And they pumped me full of this junk. After throwing me in a tub of ice, literally taking my entire body and throwing me in a tub of ice because my temperature had gotten to be 100, over 126, the doctor says he saw my blood boiling in my veins. My family gets to the hospital. Hey, we were able to bring that back. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't believe it. Yeah, we brought him back. 
Oh no, uh, no, 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 don't, don't cry. Oh no, he's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. So y'all just, <laughs> you might as well just hold on to that because y'all got a lot of work ahead of y'all. It's going to cost y'all a whole lot to take care of this mother from this point on. Yeah, because I had been without oxygen for over 18 minutes. That's right. They weren't pumping me full of oxygen. They were more concerned about my body temperature and cooling me down. That's why they threw me into a tub of ice. They weren't giving me oxygen. Without oxygen for 18 minutes, people. Yay. Yeah, that's right. And, oh, I didn't tell you the good part about it. When you want to get to the good part right now, ladies and gentlemen, I always tell people this story. My father told us when we were children, if you're ever in trouble, call on Jehovah's name. We've seen it demonstrated. I'm not going to tell you about the story on the way to Louisiana and how the truck full of nine people almost went off into the Mississippi River. Okay. During the winter, when there was ice in the river, which means we probably, none of us, for the most part, would have survived. Especially my father, because he ended up having muscular dystrophy himself. And he drowned in a so-called fishing accident. Call it an accident if you want. Other people believe it wasn't an accident. They believe it was murder. I'm going to get to that part in a minute. So, after they threw me in a tub of ice, they pumped me full of this medication. Then they start performing CPR. Then they start resuscitation. 18 minutes, everyone. I can hear, I'm in a coma now. I can hear my family members. I can hear um, Willie, Willie Williams coming into the hospital and talking to me. I can hear their voices to this day. I still hear their voices. I still hear my sister. I remember I couldn't move, couldn't blink. I could just move my fingers. And my sister saw me moving my right arm. And she asked me, do you want me to untie you? Ladies and gentlemen, if your family member is in the hospital and they ask you to untie their arms, do not do that. I don't care how much you feel sorry for them, do not do it. When she untied my arm, it took me a good eight hours all night. And that's because the nurses never came to check on me. They All night long, they never came in that room to check on me. And here I am in critical condition because they're not expecting me to make it. And I pull that stupid tube out of my throat. Now I can breathe. But the only problem is because that tube causes that valve in your throat to stay open. I'm laying on my back. You're not supposed to do that. The fluid go into my lungs and I catch pneumonia. And the nurse came in and her name was Robin, Nurse Robin. Yeah, Nurse Robin was special because she cared. And she yelled at me. Oh, no, you are not dying on me. Literally. Uh-uh, you are going to work. I don't care. <laughs> and she really, no matter how painful that was, and it really was painful, breathing into that tube. Remember, I had just come out of a coma. That's how I came out of the coma, ladies and gentlemen, is pulling that tube out of my throat. And her coming in yelling at me. And I promise you, she was yelling at me. She set that bed up. Oh, no, you're going to wake your butt up. And I'm not joking. Not joking. That's how I came out of the coma. Is after pulling that tube out and her coming into that room, I was able to get some sleep without being in pain. Ladies and gentlemen, I had kidney damage, liver damage, heart damage, brain damage, obviously. I was in a lot of pain because I had blood clots throughout my kidney, throughout my liver because of the burning of the blood inside the vessels that's right my temperature got that high to where i had blood clots of burnt blood throughout the entire system and they had to fill me full of that junk called comedin 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 whatever you want to call it that's what they filled me with so much that my families couldn't even come in and touch me for fear that i would bleed out because what it's an anticoagulant so your blood doesn't coagulate they did that because they had to flush the system. So that's my experience. Now, why am I telling you this? 
because the doctors, I believe, did this on purpose. As I told you all, I asked the doctor at least six times about testing me for the proper anesthesia, which will keep me under the least amount of time. And it just so happens they give me an overdose of the main one that I would be allergic to. Now, they didn't know I had muscular dystrophy. Because you look at me, you can see I was pretty solid. As a kid, please. I lifted 315 pounds at the age of 15. Now, technically, it was the age of 14. My brother was 15, and I was 14. Okay. You know what? Nope. I, I just messed that up too. I apologize. It wasn't at the age of 15 I did that. It was at the age of 13 I lifted 315 pounds. And the reason why I can tell you that is because I was in the seventh grade, not in the ninth grade. Ninth grade, I was 15. In the seventh grade, I was 13. My brother was at the school. My brother had the record of 300 pounds. And I lifted 315 pounds. Wasn't trying to do more than that. Just people asked me if I could do it. And I just went over there and did it. So, yeah, that was the age of 13. So I was pretty solid as a kid. The doctors could see that. So I'm pretty certain, since they knew that malignant hypothermia is triggered that way. Now, you say, well, if they really was trying to kill you, then why would they try to save you? Well, first of all, let me get it to your attention. They couldn't take the chance that I had told my family members. Pay attention. They couldn't take the chance that I told my family members about asking. That's the first one. Here's the second one. Are you ready for this? Because they had to show they at least tried. That's why they didn't try to resuscitate for 18 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. No attempt to get oxygen. So if it wasn't for the God that I serve, his name is Jehovah. Perhaps you've heard about him. If you haven't, you might want to do some research on him. If it wasn't for him... I definitely wouldn't be here. Now, if some of you, and there are some of you out there who do understand, but if some of you don't understand that there is something unique about this man that's talking, then I can't help you. Oh, you're a narcissist. I'll be a narcissist. Oh, you're so conceited. I'll be conceited. Oh, you're so stuck on yourself. Well, who else would I be stuck on other than myself? Why would I want to be stuck on somebody else? Hey, Lionel Richie. Oh, you got that feeling down deep in your soul that you can't lose? Hey, Lionel Richie says he's on his way to explain it to y'all. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was Jehovah, the God who has literally saved my life a total of maybe 17 times out of the fire, so to speak. Nobody else but him, just like the doctors. Anesthesiologists wouldn't even walk into the room. Now, I will say this. I've explained more about this this time than I have in the past because there, I remember a little bit more now than I did years ago, months ago. Not to say that I'm remembering everything because that's not the case. The worst thing about it is when I was able to move around, I was barely able to walk because kidney, hey, you've heard of people who have kidney stones and some of you have experienced kidney stones. Well, just imagine kidney stones times three. That's the type of pain I was in, and they would not give me any pain reliever. And when I asked them for pain reliever, they gave me, oh, yeah, there's something we can give you. Okay, what's that? Oh, it's a children's Tylenol. Huh? It's a children's Tylenol. The doctor doesn't want to give you anything stronger because they're afraid that you might have another episode. What the? F yeah, ladies and gentlemen, they gave me one children's Tylenol per day as a pain reliever. Now, you go back and experience kidney pain, such as kidney stones, and let them give you one children's Tylenol and see what your reaction is going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, while I was in that coma, that's the type of pain I was in constantly. Constantly. I have a friend right now. He has an uh, infection of the colon, colonitis. And because he has colitis, colonitis, um, and he has a severe case of it. He's in constant pain. And I had to let him know that I understand what he's going through. I understand the pain. I even uh, texted him yesterday because he's still in the hospital. 
He went from 275 pounds to 217 pounds. Almost flesh and bone. Pretty strong character. This is the one I, I tell you about Kenny, the one who went from lifting 225 pounds to 415 pounds. Yes, that's right. He outdid me. Kenny, five foot six and a half, and was able to go from 225 to 415 pounds in less than six weeks. Just a training regimen. Well, that young man has lost all of his muscle mass as a result of this one disease, and he's never been sick before, ever. I believe that it's not a coincidence. I'm not telling him that. I will never, ever mention that to him. But I believe that somebody was trying to get back at him for something. Kenny is vocal. He's not, he's, he's argumentative, but only on certain things. And I can see certain people being upset because they can't win that argument with him. And I could see somebody, because he works around a lot of individuals who are Cuban and from Jamaica and places, the islands. And I do believe that somebody may have done something. Can't prove it. So that's why I never say it to him. And plus, he doesn't need to hear anything like that right now. But I do know for a fact that the doctors try to kill me. I know this for a fact because I put all the pieces together. I don't believe in coincidences. Okay, case in point. While working for Domino's, six months before this incident happened, six months before this incident happened, I am driving my best friend's brother home. And as I drive that young man home, I drop him off at the house, tell him I'll see him later, tell him I'm not going to go meet up with his brother and the rest of our friends later that night because I am tired. I am not feeling well. Whew. And I got a headache. And I used to get these migraines. I mean, we talk about severe migraines, debilitating migraines. I don't get them anymore. I've not had one of them. And... Oh, since I stopped eating meat <laughs> and stopped drinking sodas. I used to eat meat all the time and used to drink sodas all the time. All the time. That was my drink. Hey, soda's got H2O in it, so I'll get my H2O for my sodas. That was my thinking back then. Stop eating meat. Stop drinking sodas. I don't get those massive headaches anymore. That's why you guys don't even hear me complaining. I may say every once in a while, yeah, I got a headache. I'm going to go lay down. But I don't get the massive headaches like I used to. But those headaches would be so, so severe that I couldn't even stand up. They'd be that debilitating. And so I told him, I'm going home. Don't feel well. And after I get three blocks from his house on a side street, an idiot hits me at 65 miles an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it could have been on purpose. I can't prove that. I cannot prove it, but I can guarantee you nothing happened to the person who hit me at 65 miles an hour causing all the damage, and a Chevy Impala that had just come from a party my sister was at, I was told. 65 miles an hour. And the thing was, the timing was not coincidental. He could only have hit me at that moment, at that angle, and the fact that he had sped up so much, if it wasn't for me getting the inkling that something was wrong and seeing a vehicle coming my way very fast and slamming on my brakes, not just hitting the brakes, slamming on my brakes to the point where my wheels and tires locked up, leaving tire tracks, the little skid marks of the tire tracks on the pavement for more than 20 years. That's right, you heard me. 20 years later, they had not redone that road and I would be able to take my friends back and say, here is where I hit my brakes which is more than 50 feet from the intersection. I was only doing 35 miles an hour, but I hit my brakes too hard to where the car just slid over the surface. The tires did not catch, they just slid. And to show how they slid, that's why there was nothing but the black tire marks to where I stopped in the middle of the intersection at the very moment the front of my car stopped, he hit the front. If I had been going just a little bit faster, he would have hit the side of the vehicle. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt at the time. The same as my best friend, who almost a year later 
wasn't wearing his seatbelt and ended up being in an accident and died. So I only survived that accident because I saw the vehicle coming before it got there. Here's the problem. You go back to that location, there are houses parked there. You can't see beyond the houses around the corner in the intersection. You can't tell there's somebody coming. And my windows were rolled up because it was, when did that accident happen? Sometime in April. So it was kind of getting cooler in the evening. And so I had my windows up and I had a headache and had the air conditioning on. And yeah, now I'm explaining all of this to all of you. And the reason why I'm doing this is because of all the junk that I've been through. I've been through a lot, done a lot, made a lot of mistakes. Well, I haven't made a lot of mistakes because there there's still a lot of mistakes to be made if I choose not to serve the God that I serve. And I choose to serve Jehovah, so I don't plan on making too many more mistakes. I don't mind being imperfect, but what I do mind is not giving him what he deserves, the credit he deserves, the attention he deserves. Ladies and gentlemen, to bring this all to a happy conclusion, after going through all of that after my brain being fried, I'm not going to talk about getting out of the hospital, uh, checking myself out of the hospital, telling them I'm leaving. My sister said, well, the doctors haven't released you. And I said, I don't care. The very same sister who dropped me off is the same one I asked to come to the hospital and pick me up. And she said, well, they haven't released you. I said, I don't care. I said, I'm leaving because they don't control me. I'm going to leave when I feel like it. I don't need nobody releasing me. By the way, we've shown you how um, individuals who are in hospitals as patients are actual inmates. Okay? That's why you need to be released by the warden, who is the treating physician. Well, he's not the warden warden, but he is your warden. He is the one who authorizes your release. You don't get to be let go until he signs a paper. Yeah that wasn't going to happen. And so I literally told them, no, <laughs> I'm going. Okay, hold on, we're getting the doctor right now. I don't care who you get. I said, I'm leaving. And they held on getting the wheelchair because you have to be wheeled out. I said, if you guys don't get that up here right now, I will walk out. You better believe they got that wheelchair up and they had a doctor sign off and I left the hospital. No treatment, no care, no, hey, you know, because we fried your brain, you're going to have some cognitive issues, homie. Yeah, you're going to be forgetting stuff and not knowing you're forgetting stuff, and you're going to have some lapse in times. Man, you're going to go through so much, and <laughs> you ain't going to have nobody to turn to because you left the hospital before we can put you through all that therapy stuff. That's right. Yeah, I know you don't want to have nothing else to do with us, but, you know, you should have stayed. And I'm like, to this day, no, I shouldn't have. Give you another opportunity? You must be out of your mother, I mean, your mind. Okay. With that being said, after going through all of that, and that took, and I haven't even explained all the details, that took 30 minutes to explain to you just that part about how they fried my brain. And yet, now, don't take this the wrong way. Some of you guys are going to take this the wrong way, and I don't care because I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my people. I'm the smartest person I know. I don't say that as if I'm bragging. I say that as to say, what is wrong with everybody else? They fried my brain, people. They damaged so many brain cells that I'm now having to use the other side of my brain. Yes, I'm one of those people they use to prove that the brain remaps itself. Go back and look at the timing of when they discovered that the brain remaps itself. I am one of those people that they use to prove that. So it's the right and the left side that I get to use. But what I don't understand is how come everybody else is not at the same place, or even better. Yeah, 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 I know there are people out there who may have more knowledge about one thing that I don't have as much knowledge about, but I don't care about that. You know what I care about? I care about the fact that I have knowledge about the things that I consider important. You follow me? So I say to you all, why can't you have knowledge about the things you consider are important? 
Now, some of you don't know how to tap into that knowledge. So you mind if I give you what has helped me? Because remember, I don't have a memory. I don't have a memory. So what has helped me? I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. First, I kept asking Jehovah for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and discernment. Now, hold on now. Some of y'all don't understand. So I'm not talking to you. The people who don't want to listen, go on. Because the people who don't want to listen, we're going to go to the reference Bible. And we're going to go to Proverbs. Y'all remember Proverbs? Man, I remember Proverbs like it was Proverbs. You know what I'm saying? We can go to the second chapter of Proverbs. Now, this is Jehovah speaking. My son, if you will receive my sayings and treasure up my own commandments with yourself, so as to pay attention to wisdom, wisdom comes from Jehovah, with your ear, not your physical ear, your mind's ear, that you may incline your heart to discernment. So I started asking for wisdom, discernment. If moreover you call out for understanding and understanding itself, and you give forth your voice to discernment itself, being able to discern, distinguish right from wrong, and if you keep seeking it as for silver and as for hid treasures, you keep searching for it. In that case, you will understand the fear of Jehovah and you will find the very knowledge of God. So I asked him for knowledge, understanding, discernment, wisdom. Those four things. I kept asking for it because what did he say? If you keep searching for it. So I kept asking and I kept searching. Hold on now. Uh -uh. I know some of y'all know where I'm going, but you better believe I'm going to go there. Matthews, the seventh chapter. This is the Jesus, the Jesus saying this. And I want you all to pay attention to what he says. Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be open to you. For everyone asking receives and everyone, including me, seeking finds and to everyone knocking including you it will be open ladies and gentlemen i love the fact that therefore if you although being wicked he was talking to the scribes and the pharisees who were wicked know how to give good gifts to your children how much more so will your father who is in the heavens give good things to those asking him so i put that to the test that's how i can say what i say how else do you think it happens? What do you think about Solomon? How did Solomon get it? Did he not ask for it? Go ahead. Go back and read his history. Read his story. Did he not ask for it? So I said I was going to put that to the test. So why not try it? Because I did. I just had to trust that it would work out. And everybody keeps telling, oh, you're so smart. You just know so much. Oh, the amount of information. They prove it to me all the time that he answered my prayer. Just like when I was in the hospital and I said, oh, Jehovah, help me. Because I knew something was wrong. Not because the doctor said something was wrong. I had this very eerie feeling that came over me. And anybody who's ever succumbed to death, clinical death, and was revived or resuscitated, they know the feeling I'm talking about. Anybody who's ever had a so-called near-death experience knows the feeling I'm talking about. Well, that eerie feeling that I had, I knew something was wrong, and I knew that I possibly wouldn't survive. The same as when I was in the pool drowning and was going down for the last time and gave all of my effort to go up one last time and said, Jehovah, this is the last time. I won't have the energy to do this again. Went down, pushed up from the floor, and then was able to spot my friend Will, and I splashed water his way, and he saw me go down, and he came over and helped me with the aid of Jehovah, because remember, it was Jehovah who I called upon. Again, my father told us, when you're in trouble, call on Jehovah's name. Ladies and gentlemen, my father was right. Yeah, 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 I know my father called on Jehovah's name when he was drowning, and I know that, let's just put it this way, he did not suffer. He drowned. And I do not believe that he drowned without assistance. The two main individuals that were there have deceased. Both of them, pay attention, both of them deceased in 
very violent ways. One, deceased by being shot in the head and left in the middle of the street for three straight days. Children walking over the body going to school because Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen, I know some of you don't believe this, but let me tell you how often in Los Angeles they'll leave a body just laying on the ground. And nobody will come pick it up because it's a bureaucratic thing. It's bureaucracy. Oh, no, that's the such and such. We've already told them we put in a call and we can't do anything about it. They have to come and remove it and we have to wait on them. That's Los Angeles, people. That's every county. That was my stepbrother. Now, I, I never called him my stepbrother. Uh, that was my brother. I've never called them stepbrothers. They're, they've always been classified as brothers to me. Well, that particular brother was, he and I were the closest in age. And let's just say his death, I know that that situation bothered him. And then the other one was my half-mother, second mother. And she suffered greatly after that incident with three different strokes. I treated her, I had no proof to the other, to the contrary, so I treated her as if she was who she always was to me, my second mother. We would have conversations, we would sit down, we would talk, and I would never, ever form an opinion as to what happened. But the fact as to how both of their lives ended, all you got to do is go back. I'm not saying, I'm not saying this was caused by Jehovah, but what I am saying, and you go back in scripture and you look at the individuals who years later, like Eli, Huffni, and his brother, okay, you go back and you look at the way certain people lost their lives, including Saul, how they suffered as a result. Now, hey, well, hold on now. Jonathan suffered along with Saul. Jonathan wasn't a bad guy. So I'm not saying that they were taken out by somebody. I'm saying that we'll find out soon enough. Okay. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if I could offer you all any advice, any being able to see what's going on, because you heard me playing that in the background. We have one who can see, being able to see what's going on. If I could offer you any advice, ask him for knowledge, but don't ask God. He, he didn't say ask God. Okay, now hold on. Oh, y'all didn't know that that's what ask God means? The ask gods, come on now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Jehovah. I know, I know, I know. You don't agree with that. That's too bad. He didn't ask for your agreement. He's the one who said his name is Jehovah. Okay. I don't already did too many videos showing you guys from all of the original translations of the Bible, the Tetragrammaton, what it meant, and how it was in the Bible over 7,222 times. His name used to appear in the Bible 7,222 times, and they took his name out. Hold on. Give me one second. Not going to go all into depth with it. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. The removal of God's name from the Bible based on superstition. Stop listening. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who this is right here. Because religious leaders removed his name because they didn't want people to know his name or call the name, and call the name was supposed to be called on the name because they feel it was too holy to call it. They Now, that is the reason why they took his name out. There was, and it was the original name in Hebrew was Yahweh. That's the closest pronunciation because they only use J-H-V-H or Y-H-W-H, which is known as the four consonants. The E and the A were not included. So Y-H-W-H, the E and the A were not included in the O. E-O-A, so J-H-V-H, that's called the tetragrammaton, the four consonants. That's what tetragrammaton means. Tetra, four, grammaton, consonants, grammatical, i.e. consonants, so the tetragrammaton. 
Why was God's personal name removed from the Bible? So do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go asking nobody. Do your research and find out for yourself. Then call on that name. Don't call him God. You know how many gods there are out there? Okay, watch this. Wake up. Hindus worship 480 million gods. Stop listening. <laughs> Themis or Artemis. That's uh, the goddess justice. Okay. How many gods do you worship? Ladies and gentlemen, why? Why? Oh, oh, that's what, oh, it didn't, it says Indus. <laughs> H-I-N-D-U apostrophe S-C. See, this one says 300 million gods. I'm going to do the 480 million gods. See, it... Do Hindus worship all of their million gods? I don't care if they worship all of their million gods, but please understand, millions of gods. There are millions of gods. Well, he knows which one I'm talking to. No, he doesn't, because you don't know which one you're talking to. Sorry. I know exactly who. Well, who is it that you're talking to? I'm talking to the one that's named in the box. Then why don't you use his name? Why don't you use his name? Because I'm stubborn and stupid and I don't want to use his name because I don't have to use his name. Even though he says you have to? That's right. I can do whatever I want to do because I'm better than everybody else. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't let me, don't, no, do not let me interfere with you being better than everybody else. You can do things your own way. Whew. Man, you can do things your own way. You don't need me. You don't need the world. Uh, example of God personally killing people. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and end this here with the God's things um, because the 480 million, um, even if it's not 480 million, let's say it's 330 million. That's a lot of gods. So what are the names of all of these gods? Can you imagine a book that that would be written in and the explanation as to defining how each one of them or what each one of them stands for? Well, Jehovah is the God of the Bible. His son, Christ Jesus, is his son. If you don't believe me, the scribes and the Pharisees, when he was being put to death, they said, let him pull himself down from the stake. That's right, he died on a stake, not a cross. Since he said he was God's son, the scribes and the Pharisees said that he said he was God's son, but everybody else wanted to say that Jesus is God. Okay, if that's what you believe, I'm going to say knock yourself out. But the Bible doesn't agree with you. Well, it says I and the Father are one. Yes, yeah, just like a husband and a wife are one. Same thing. That's the reason why I used that phrase. Well, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. He's saying that exactly so. Why? Because he's saying whatever the father would do, I would do. So you don't need to see the father, Philip. Why? Because, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. You don't need to see the father. You have me. Interesting, ain't it? So, what I did is I called on Jehovah because that's what he says his name is. I didn't tell him that's his name. How do I, what, what right do I have to tell him what his name is? I've always believed that. I can't call you by any other name than the name you asked me to call you by. Now, we have a telegram group where individuals, we do trading, and we teach people how to do trading under the CYOC. Choice, Chris Unseen. Ladies and gentlemen. We require everybody to come in there and use one of their legal names, and they can use any other nickname after that, as long as it's not advertisement and as long as it's not derogatory. 
A lot of people have complied with no problem. Then we got some people, well, I'm not going to change my name because then fine, you just won't be a part of this. That's your loss, not ours. Sorry to see you go. Poking a smile. Have it while you're doing it moving. There are so many people scheming and scamming people. <sighs> now, one last thing. We were talking about the true God. And people are asking the question. Dick Gregory said something about Jehovah. That Well, he said a lot of things about Jehovah. Well, he was talking. And he said some things about, why didn't he just destroy Satan? Because he ain't that type of God. He doesn't just destroy people just to be destroying them. He always gives individuals an opportunity to correct their 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 uh, ignorance. And even with Satan, what Satan did was wrong, but there was no law against it. Can you imagine a time when there was no law against sinning? Because there was no such thing as sin. Even Adam and Eve, when they sinned, it had never happened before. There was no law. It was just if you eat from this tree, the day you do it, you will die. That was the law. But prior to that, there hadn't been a law. In heaven, there was no law saying you can't interfere with man, and if you interfere with them, then you will be destroyed. There was no law. So Satan could not be punished. You guys know that. You see that in society when there is no law, the person cannot be held liable. Where do you think they get that principle from? Wait, hold on. Let me show y'all that it's a principle of the Bible so that some of y'all will understand. Wake up. There is no law. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here you have it. This is in Romans. Notice what it says. In reality, the law produces wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there any transgression or sin. If there is no law, how can you violate it? This is Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 15. For it was not through law that Abraham or his offspring had the promise that he should be heir of a world, but it was through righteousness by faith. For those who adhere to law are heirs. Faith becomes, if those who adhere to law are heirs, faith becomes useless and the promise is abolished. In reality, the law produces wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there transgression or sin. So. That was the principle. I know, I know, I know it makes sense now. But many of you, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask him for the knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and discernment. Jehovah's Witnesses go knocking on doors all the time. Trying to show this to people. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses believe this and they believe that and they believe this. Really? How do you know? Have you ever asked one? I was watching a television show, and they were talking about Jehovah's Witnesses in the in the TV show, and they were saying some stupid things that Jehovah's Witnesses would never believe. But that's because that's what people do with Jehovah's Witnesses. They make up things, and other people believe it just because somebody told it to them. Y'all know me. I show y'all everything. Everything. I don't just talk to you guys about this or that. Every law I show you, every scripture I show you, every website that I talk about, I show you where I'm getting the information so you can go and look at it for yourself. You want to do some research? Hey, I'm going to do this one last thing, then we're going to cut this video off because there ain't no need of us staying here. Ain't no need in worry. That's bankruptcy court. Uh-uh, we ain't doing bankruptcy court. We're going to go back to the Hindu thing. Ladies and gentlemen. We're going to come up here and we're going to go jw.org. Okay, we're going to go to jw.org. Did a video on this before. We're going to, going to go all the way to the bottom. All, I'm going to decline. I don't want, I don't want that. I, no, I don't have to. Okay, now when I come here, what I'm looking for is JW Library. Pay attention. Not the online library, JW Library. And here are the, you can get it on your phone. 
but we want the download. No, not that one. We want the Windows version. I messed up the last time. Not, they got it from Microsoft, uh, not Microsoft, but Macintosh, Apple. This is it for Windows, okay? This is it for Windows, so we're going to click on it. And I'm looking for the link, download. Now, be careful. This is two gigabytes because it's over 70 years worth of information. And I would definitely suggest looking at the Awake magazine because the Awake magazine, although it touches on science, it deals more with the factual things as far as nature and comparing it and so forth. The Watchtower deals more with uh, in-depth study of a particular subject. Download it. Then you will automatically pay attention. We got to go up because we got to look for the Bibles. Oh, we got to get rid of this. Sorry about that. In order for us to get to the Bible, we're going to go all publications, uppy, uppy, and then we're going to click on Bible. And then we're going to see the different King James, Brother, Rotterdam's version, American Standard Version, Byington's Version, Reference, New World Translation, Study Bible, New World Translation, and the New World Translation, blah, blah, blah. These are the Bibles, ladies and gentlemen, that are, comes with it automatically. Do your research. And it has cross-references. See that right there? Just click on it. Or, pay attention, extract all. And here are all the ones that I just talked about. Ta-da! There you go. Now you can do your research yourself. You don't need to do anything other than download it, take a look at it, do your research, and then compare that research with other materials and see which one pans out. Don't say I never did nothing for you. Keep asking them for knowledge. Keep asking him for wisdom. Keep asking him for understanding. Keep asking him for discernment. Because he guarantees you if you keep asking, keep seeking, keep requesting, keep knocking, it will be open, given, and sown to you. But ladies and gentlemen, I put that to the test, especially after the operation. Oh, you have no idea because I needed to hold on to information, ladies and gentlemen. And if I was going to hold on to any information, I chose the best information. That was my choice because my memory was gone. Okay. I don't remember my childhood. I don't remember growing up. I know who my family members are. I know who. But if I saw my sister, who I am the most proud of, I would not recognize her unless she approached me first. At this very moment, and I'm not happy about that. My brothers, yeah, I recognize them from a distance. But my sister, the one to whom I am more proud of than all the others, I would not recognize her. Have not seen her since, I think the last time I saw her would have been probably 2010. Yeah. That long ago. All right. Y'all take care. We will talk again. I just thought I'd take the time to explain this stuff to some of you because some of you didn't know. Some of you are new. And so this is the man who's putting out information. So, hey, test everything I say and prove me wrong. That's what I, I beg people to prove me wrong. Don't say I'm wrong. Oh, God. that You'll be walk, walking into a buzzsaw. You say I'm wrong and don't email me with your critique. Do your own videos. Prove me wrong. Okay? Prove me wrong. Don't be like these other guys who do videos and don't show nobody nothing. Just be talking and talking and talking and don't show no proof of any of their work. Proof of putting. Proof of work. Proof of concept. They don't show proof of nothing. Stop listening to those guys. Now, you'll hear me talk about people like Yusuf L. Yusuf L shows you where he's getting his information from. Okay, as a matter of fact, I've even started listening to some of Yusuf L's video. Now, that doesn't mean that his videos weren't worthwhile. That means that I'm finding them more than worthwhile. The only problem is I don't have a lot of time. I don't do a lot of listening to people's videos, but I've taken the time to listen to Yusuf L. Don't like all the cursing, but hey, those are his videos. He wants to do it that way. That's what he does. Okay, cannot tell that man nothing about what he does. I can only say that. I like the information he produces. Just that simple. Do I agree with everything? No, but I don't have to. You follow me?
I'm doing it for information. I'm not doing it for, and he's saying pretty much almost exactly what I'm saying. It's just that he does a lot more research into case law and dictionary and definitions. And I don't care for that. I really don't, but it is helpful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good night. We've taken an hour uh, to do this. So let's get out of here. Goodbye.